<clears throat> okay, Dave again. I am now in Southwell Minster. And this is where my great grandfather was buried. Edwin Sands. Spelled Sandies, but pronounced Sands. I guess the Y is silent. He was the Archbishop of York, died in 1588, and was buried here. It's a Norman church built in the 1100s. <clears throat> and apparently they removed his original grave, which is up from the, uh, the high altar of the church, um, or at least the, uh, the, the sarcophagus. <clears throat> The gravestone, I guess, and they moved that over, over here. So I'll show you what it looks like. And apparently, it was damaged during the uh, Oliver Cromwell time during the Revolution, and uh, so they've kind of refurbished it. This is saying, I can't read it too well. Something about archbishops being buried here. Only the Archbishop Sands tomb remains. And this would be his uh, tomb, apparently. So, this is what he looked like. Kind of uh, interesting. Alabaster, I suppose, is what they call that. Now this is interesting too, that's supposed to be his wife, one, two, three, four, five, six children, and his two daughters. Now the fifth ch child was Henry, that was my great-grandfather. Supposedly, according to my records at least. I'm going to come back here. And so up here was where his, uh, his gravesite is. So he's buried up here. So that, that, mo that little monument used to sit above his grave which I think was in this corner over here, uh, and they moved it. Um, but that means his grave, he would be buried in the ground up here. Um, and they just basically moved the headstone that marked his grave marker. Okay. And then we come down here. There's a lot of uh, these these carvings date back to the 1200s. All these uh, like natural kind of leaves on so the place. Apparently this is this is famous for these carvings. Um, and
thought. I guess they call this the green man with the, the, the leaves coming out of his mouth. There's a bunch of them. That's basically uh, the gist of it. I'll go walk around the outside now. Um, so he was an Archbishop of York, and they have an Archbishop's Palace here uh, where he would live. Um, the story about why he was buried here instead of in the York Minster it has to do with, uh, I guess, 1588. Uh, he was in a lot of trouble um, while he was the archbishop. He, um, I guess, was imprisoned. How do you get out of here? Oh, there you go. Uh, hopefully it's not raining too badly. Okay, so that's what's remaining of the... That's what's remaining of the archbishop's palace. That wall there. Um, but evidently this was it. So what's behind this wall, um, so I guess that was an interior wall. And uh, it's now a garden. Uh, there's a new palace for the bishop. I don't know if you call it a palace, but a manor or a house. Um, but there's a garden out here. Let me come up here. This is uh, this is where the house was. <clears throat> um, in this little area here. So I guess the bishop lives there now, the present bishop. But all right. Uh, so this is Southwell Minster. Again. Um, so Edwin Sands used to, uh, I guess he kind of retired here to get away from the commotion and all the, I guess maybe the, uh, politics that were in, uh, York. And, um, this is where he died. So he spent his later years here and died here, um, as Archbishop. And so he's buried inside the... The minster of the church. This is not okay. It's starting to rain. So I'll make this quick and get back to my car. Uh, it looks like they're doing some uh, renovations on the roof. So uh, I want to hang out here. I did get to go inside to the library, which was cool. Um, the, uh, the the ladies that work here I'm not sure what her position is I should have asked but um, she had keys to the place and took me to all the private places that nobody was allowed to go into including the library and showed me a bunch of books um, uh, on the Sands family um, the the sermons of Edwin Sands which I believe are in print, so they could be purchased. Um, but, all right, so I'm gonna come out this way and then head back to my car. But before this dies, I'm gonna turn it off. Dave again. All right, so I am now at 
what I believe is called St. Bartholomew's Church. Let's see. Is there a sign? Uh, I don't see anything that says St. Bartholomew. Um, but this is St. Bartholomew's Church. <clears throat> And uh, apparently I have grandparents who are buried in this cemetery somewhere. Um, a lot of the headstones are um, too worn out to, to read anything, really. It's just a metal slab now. Um, but uh, I can't see with the tree in the way. Hi, puppy. Hello. Hey, puppy. Hi. Okay, so here's the church. There's a bunch of houses, you can see that one right there. It's a lot of really old houses here. So I'm not sure how old they are. My guess is they've been they've been standing for as long as these the church has been standing. Um, maybe they renovated them though. But, uh, trying to get the church as much as well as we can. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, so what's this say? 1850s. This is a bunch of farmland. There's a couple of horses there. Of course, now I got dogs barking, so I'll hurry this up. <clears throat> But, okay, beautiful day out today. It's in the 70s. I'm wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt, and it's perfect weather. Not too cold, not too hot. Um, so St. Bartholomew's Church, I'll have to look up at, uh, as far as any sort of history on it, how old it is. It's been around since at least the 1400s. Um, at least, you know, 1500s. So, um, so my grandfather owned about, uh, apparently 240 acres of land here. This is an old door. Um, a couple hundred, a few hundred acres of land at least. And then, let's just be able to push it in. Um, and when he died, his wife, my grandmother married the, the minister of the church. So she would have, I assume, she would have lived in these houses that are next door. This would have been all of her property, um, the church farm and everything. But he had 240 acres, so I, I mean, they had all this land. I'm sure all the land around here was probably theirs. Um, but this is what the church looks like now. This is, uh, I'm sure it's pretty much the same on the inside since it was back then. Yeah, some of the stuff like 1800, they have like plaques on the wall from the 1800s. So not a whole lot from the 1600s or 1500s. Maybe the stained glass. Not really seeing any dates anywhere for that. Windows probably. I mean, these do look like they're old windows, so I'm sure they're probably pretty old. It's over here. But the ceiling too, that's kind of cool. All the rafters up there. Uh, and there's some glass up there too. Let's see on that. You can't really see it too well. But anyways. 
does this say? This looks like it's pretty old. Plus Ultra. All right, well, this is uh, St. Bartholomew's Church um, in Chalvington, England. This is in East Sussex County. And apparently this is where my Benjamin grandparents lived in, um, well, they would have worshiped at this church, been members of this church. Got married here, had baptisms here. Um, I'm sure that their funerals were here. There might even have some graves here. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, this is it. Get over here and get a shot of this. So it's I'm talking 500 years now, actually probably closer to six, yeah, 500 years, but uh, all right, and then uh, this is all like the old church farm right here, um, I don't know what any of this stuff is, maybe this is like the pastor's house or something, there's some houses next door too. All right, this is Chalvington, um, at least the church anyways. So I'm gonna go into town next. This is my rental car up here and uh, see what I can find. I'm thinking everything's probably closed. It's like 6 p.m. so, but I can take pictures, a couple hours of sunlight. Sunny off. If there's somebody insert doing that or if it just automatically does that, I don't know. 
But here I am. This is the All Saints Parish or All Saints Church. Something like that. That's open. Parish of Old Heathfield. Okay, All Saints Church, Parish of Old Heathfield. So this is also where my grandparents went to church back in the 1400s and 1500s. Um, Wow. Not sure how all these houses are. All these tombstones that I see are from the 1900s. I don't know. Maybe at some point they didn't bury their dead like this. I don't know what point they started. But, anyways, walk around and I'll go inside. Uh, it keeps going all the way back there. There's graves all over the place. So it's about 7.30, I believe. Sun will set in about a, an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. Somewhere on there. Okay. I'm going to go inside. I think somebody's in there ringing bells. So let's see if I can... See what's going on. <clears throat> and I'm gonna get some photos too. Well, that's 17. What does this say? Yeah. 1700s right there, so we're getting close.
<laughs> I think there's a school next door. I don't know what these kids are doing. So here's the inside of the right. Uh, actually, what is it called? The Saint John. The, yeah, Saint John the Baptist. Right. I guess I can leave that there. Let's see what happens. Maybe I can't open it. The doorknob's twisting. Well, wow. I thought somebody just rang the bell, so. Could be a an automatic one. It looks like this is a combination. So I don't know, maybe it's on like an automatic timer kind of a thing. But here's the uh I'm sure this definitely would have been here back then. So all this is extremely old. All this stuff is. Nineteen eleven. They have these plaques on the wall that I guess the eighteen ninety eight. They have not have anything going back any further than that. Oh, this might be good. What's this say? Seventeen twenty-five. There's a twenty-eight. Well, this thing I've seen so far. Seventeen thirty-six. Seventeen twenty-eight. Okay.
So that's the bell. That's kind of neat. I saw that in the All Saints Church in Heathfield last night. A bunch of people up there pulling the bell strings. So, all right. Well, I guess that's about it for now. What, what's all this stuff say? These are all old buildings. I don't know why these dates are as old as they should be. All right, that's about it then. I'll take some photos. It's Dave again. Well, once again, I'm at a church. This is St. Dunstan's in Cranbrook. And um, my great grandfather was the vicar of this church. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Vicka, I think is how they say it. <laughs> um, back in the 1600s, so uh, I'm not sure if they have graves that go back then. I don't think we're trying to find them. They're all 1900s again. 1800s. Eighteen twenty. Well, these look pretty old. Uh, oh, what does that say? Shh. Can't make that out. Those look like they're uh, probably pretty old. Can't even read them. Yeah, I have no idea. 1800s, uh, 1800s, these are all 1800s, 1800s, so I don't know, I'm not sure I'm going to have any luck, anything older than the 1800s, you can't read them, but uh, the church, I don't know if I can get inside. There's a bin. A beaming. This one's in a gate. What does that say? Well, I don't know. It'd be nice if somebody is here, I could ask them a question. Eighteen fifties. So I don't think they started using tombstones until the eighteen hundreds, unfortunately. Well, There's seventeen hundreds for these guys. Uh, who's this? Seymour. There's those bells again. So he was the vicar, the, the minister. There. His daughter married my grandfather on the Benjamin side. Seventeen nineties. Eighteen hundreds, it looks pretty old. Nineteen oh gosh. The oldest thing I've seen so far has been on the floor at the other church, so maybe there's some stuff on the floor. Okay. 
Okay, let's just bounce off to Ceilings are always cool in these places. I wonder if those like original, or if they have to keep replacing those every now and then. I think the wood would get old at some point. <clears throat> somebody here. Well, okay, here's 1400s. I think that was about a crusader. Is there any more of those around? 1800s, 1800s. This would be probably 1600. So we got 400 years ago. <clears throat> I did hear that all the older stuff's written in Latin, like from the 1400s. Seventeen oh two, seventeen fifty six. Okay, the tower built about fourteen twenty five. Contains eight bells, a tenor, and a clock. The church tower open. Can I get in?
1691 to 1616, so that's, that's more like it. Let's see. Reverend William Eddy. Oh, no, that's him. That's my grandpa. Holy sh shoot. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't want to say that. Okay, what does this say? This, uh, let me take a photo of this. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, I, I read this, and uh, I'll try to... Some of the words I can't make out, but I'll try to get as best I can. This says, zooming in... Uh, this is like this tablet and these, um, I think it's three maybe, these three windows were dedicated by Robert Eddy um, of Boston in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Let me zoom out now. Okay, USA for the memory of his ancestor of the Reverend William Eddy, this is M.A. Vicar, of this church from 1591 to 1616. And then you look down here, whose sons John and Samuel and whose daughter Abigail, that's my grandma, were among the pilgrims, settlers, of, I don't know what that says, D-R-I-U, of Drew, England? Oh, New England, okay, of New England. And they're implanted for the benefit of a numerous prosperity, the religious principles they're uh, taught through. Okay, so that's about my family. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I found something. <clears throat> and I don't know when this was made. I'll have to figure out who this Robert character is. Uh, dedicated by Robert. What does that say? I don't know what the middle name is. H R N. I N. I don't know what that means. Robert Eddy of Boston. So I don't know. It does have some sort of crest here. Like three Jesus looking characters on it. I don't know. Well, that's cool. Found that. Um, so John Benjamin married Abigail Eddy and went to America in 1632. And then the two brothers, Samuel and John Eddy, were already there. They got there in 1620, so they're 12 years earlier, I believe. <clears throat> so that's the history. This is where they came from. So that's pretty cool. So they're saying there's three windows. I wonder what windows they're talking about. Maybe these windows? It must be these three windows, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, maybe it's these three. Okay, so it's these three. One, two, three. Got it. That makes sense. All right, so I'm going to take a photo of this then. Okay. <sighs> All right, so there's the church bell tower over here. And I just got video of people pulling on those strings at the Heathfield Church. And there's the ceiling. So let me continue just walking around. Um, 
Actually, this is the way I came in, so I, I walked around the whole thing. So, all right, well, I'm going to take some photos then. And uh, that'll be it. I'm heading out to, I, I think I should go to Hastings since I'm so close. But I'm on my way to um, Stonehenge today, and it's getting kind of late, so I think I have to hurry up. But, all right, so I'm going to do another quick pan around here. I'm done. Okay, day of again. Try this one more time. I am at St. Dunstan's in Cranbrook. This was uh, a church that my great grandfather, William Eddie, actually, I think it's pronounced Edie. William Eady was, uh, he was the vicar, vicar, I don't know how you pronounce that, basically the minister of this church. And um, back in the 1600s, actually 1500s, and his daughter, was my grandmother, um, married my grandfather from Heathfield, and they moved to America in 1632. <clears throat> so about 400 years ago. Um, but he was the minister of this church and it was his daughter. They moved to America, I guess, uh, it was common, a bunch of people in the 16th, 1600s were moving to America for uh, religious freedom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that was about the time that Thomas Beckett was murdered by the king's uh, ruffians. Actually, this was um, this is in Kent, and Canterbury is in Kent, so this is fairly close. Um, and then it'll happen. Thomas Beckett was, I think, the archbishop. Okay. Okay, it's Dave again. I'm going to read this plaque. It says, well, this tablet and these three windows, so it's referring to, I think, one, two, three, those three windows, were dedicated by Robert something, maybe Henry? Yeah, I think it's Robert Henry Eddy, or Eddy, of Boston, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, USA, to the memory of his ancestor, the Reverend William Eddy, or Eddy, uh, M.A., vicar of this church from 1591 to 1616. So he was my grandfather. William Eddy was my grandfather. And then you come down here and it says, uh, whose sons John and Samuel and whose daughter Abigail, that's my grandmother, were among the pilgrim settlers of New England and there implanted for the benefit of a numerous prosperity, the religious principles here taught them. Cool. This is a plaque for my grandfather and grandmother, actually. Um, dedicated by one of his grandchildren who lived in Boston. I don't see a date or anything. But I'm sure they have something like that. You no, know, when it was dedicated. But anyways, that is it. Okay, Dave again. I am now in a place called Carlton Curlew. Not sure, I think that's probably how it's pronounced. Carlton Curlew. Um, 
And here's the church that uh, would have been here when my great grandparents lived here. So they were the this was the Ward family. Um, they lived in this place for a couple hundred years, Carlton Curlew. And uh, I'm going to try to figure out which house exactly. I think I know which one. There's a manor down the road. <clears throat> but there, there might be a few of them, so I want to make sure I can. And I can't get inside. The doors seem to be locked. But I might be able to find somebody around here that can help me get in. Um... There is a grave here that has a ward on it. So I'll, uh, I'll get that on film real quick. Uh, most of these tombstones go back to the 1800s, so. I don't know what they did with the dead before that. There's a bunch of sheep. This is a big sheep farm. They're all over England, actually. A lot of sheep farming in England, I guess. I didn't realize that. Here's the, uh, this is the farm that the wards went to. They would have got married here, had, you know, bap baptisms and weddings. Um, I think back in the 1500s, 1400s, probably the 1300s, it goes back a few hundred years. And they lived here for a while. It was. So, but I'll go, I believe it's this one over here. That's a really old tree. It might have even been here when they were here. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it's doing. Looks like it's still alive, but it's kind of a funky tree. Anyways, um, where was it? Oh, right here. Uh, let's see, in loving memory of dear wife and mother Marie Ward, who passed away on the 5th of January 2004. Their husband Anthony Keith Ward, who passed away in uh, 2013. Um, it's fairly recent, but apparently the Wards are in this area. There's a Ward family living here. They lived in their 80s when they died. So, uh,. And I'm sure that they didn't live in the same place, but who knows? We'll f I'll, f I'll try to figure some stuff out. Um, what's over here? So, uh, these are 1975, 1969. These are all fairly recent. So yeah, I don't know what um, what the deal is with the uh, tombstones, but they don't really go back further than the 1800s, as far as I can tell. I think 1700s is the oldest that I've seen. I think. So, uh, and usually that's inside the church, kind of in the floor. They'll etch something under the floor, like on a tile of the floor. But, um, all right. So out here, there's a, a manor farm. Um, I'm not sure what any of this stuff is. There doesn't seem to be an actual town with like a pub or anything. Looks like it's just a bunch of houses with, uh, well, let's see, what does this say? Sunday services for July. Carlton Curlew, 8.30 and 10.30. So I think I missed those. Yeah, I missed those. But okay. I don't know where that would have been. Um, but if you come down here, I mean, there really isn't a whole lot here. This is a church cottage. You know, I should probably ring the bell. That's where the guy lives that runs the church. The library. That might be where I want to go. Um, they had this thing called the Carlton Curlew Manor. And that's right straight, it's basically right here. Um, apparently, I want to say Thomas Ward had like hundreds of acres of land like like 
maybe he had like 500 acres of land, like 300 acres of land, something like that. I think he sold uh, a couple of a couple of batches off, and one was like 350, one was 250, something like that. So there's a whole bunch of land that would have been. I mean, that's like a lot of land, 500 acres. Yeah, there's a puppy. Any person who admits to shut the fast in the gate is liable to penalty exceeding 40 shillings. I don't know. I should go in there and find out who. So usually there's somebody in town that's big on history. Um, that I could probably talk to. Normally I'll go into a uh, a town and I'll I'll stop at the church and see if anybody's there. Usually they're empty. But the doors are open so you can go inside. Um, and then my next stop is the pub. And go hang out, the, talk to the bartender. Usually they know who who in town has all the information. And they, a, couple of, you know, one, one, a couple of times they've actually called people for me. <laughs> um, but Or you can just talk to the people sitting at the bar. You know, people here are friendly enough. They... Uh, you know, buy you a drink or something. But, so I believe this is it right here. That's the gate going inside. Um, so I don't know. You know what? I can ask this lady on the bike. It's convenient. But here's 200, 200 something acres or three, actually it would have been like three, probably 500 acres. So maybe all this stuff might have been in. But here's the manor going in here. I'm going to turn this off and talk to this lady.